Hello everyone. In this video, we will see about the anatomy of back of the leg. So in this diagram, we can see when we take the transverse section of the leg, we can see the three compartments of leg. One is anterior compartment, second is lateral, and the third one is the posterior compartment, which we call it as the back of the leg. In the back of leg, we will see that the cutaneous innervation of the back of the leg is supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh in the upper part and in the lower part it is supplied by the sural nerve. The lateral aspect of the back of the leg, the cutaneous innervation is provided by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf and the medial aspect is supplied by the saphenous nerve. Below the skin we find the superficial fascia which contains the short saphenous vein and these cutaneous nerve namely peroneal communicating branch of the common peroneal nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of the calf and the sural nerve. Now the boundaries of the posterior compartment. Anteriorly we can see the posterior aspect of the tibia. So here we can see the posterior aspect of the tibia, fibula, the intraosseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula and the posterior intermuscular septum. Then posteriorly we find the deep fascia of the leg extending from the medial border of tibia to the posterior intermuscular septum. So these are the boundaries of posterior compartment of the leg and further we have three subdivisions of the back of leg. These are superficial, middle and deep. With the help of superficial transverse septum and deep transverse septum, we have these three divisions. The attachment of superficial transverse septum is on the medial side, it is attached on the medial border of the tibia. In this diagram, we can see the medial attachment of superficial transverse septum. This is nothing but the fascia, deep fascia. And laterally, it is attached to the posterior border of fibula. So here we can see this is the superficial transverse septum. This one is the superficial transverse septum this one and this is the deep transverse septum this is attached medially to the proximal part of the soleal line and vertical ridge on the posterior surface of tibia and laterally it is attached to the medial crest of fibula now the superficial part it lies between the deep fascia and the superficial transverse septum so here we can see this is the deep fascia and this is the superficial transverse septum in between these two we have the superficial compartment of the back of leg then the middle part lies between the superficial and the deep transverse septum. So this one is the middle part and this is the deepest part which is lying deep to the deep transverse septum. In the superficial part we can we have the gastrocnemius soleus and plantaris muscles. In the middle part we have plexa digitorum longus, plexa hallucis longus and in the deep part we have the tibialis posterior muscle. Now this is the posterior compartment, it is innervated by the tibial nerve which is a branch of sciatic nerve. Now the muscles of the posterior compartment that is the superficial compartment. Now in the superficial compartment we have gastrocnemius, plantaris and soleus. So this is the gastrocnemius muscle. It is having two heads that is medial head and lateral head. Lateral head arises from the posterior lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur and the medial head arises from the popliteal surface of femur and the posterior superior surface of medial condyle of femur. The insertion is via calcaneal tendon to the posterior surface of the calcaneus. So here we can see this is the calcaneus and these are the two heads of the gastrocnemius. This muscle is supplied by the tibial nerve as we have only this nerve in the posterior compartment of the leg which is supplying all these muscles of back of leg. The action of this muscle is flexion of the knee and plantar flexion of the foot. The clinical anatomy related to this muscle is that we have the tennis leg means whenever there is painful calf injury due to tear or strain of medial head of gastrocnemius and its musculotendinous junction due to overstretching, this condition is termed as the tennis leg. So here we can see the tear of this muscle at its musculotendinous junction because of stretching 
which is resulting into the pain in the back of leg this is the tennis leg then we have plantaris muscle so in the arrow mark we can see the plantaris muscle this is the vestigial muscle of our body and it is arising from the lateral supracondylar ridge of femur it is inserted on the posterior aspect of calcaneum via calcaneal tendon the action of this muscle is weakly uh, plantar flexion of your ankle joint also it is helpful for weak flexion of the knee joint then we have the soleus muscle it is arising from the posterior surface of the head then the posterior surface of the upper one fourth part of the shaft of fibula then we have the soleal line and middle one third of the medial border of tibia and a fibrous band which is arching between the tibia and the fibula so these are the originating points and it is inserted on the calcaneum via the tendo achilles that is calcaneum tendon along with the gastrocnemius and plantaris on the middle facet of the posterior surface of calcaneum it is inserting the action is same that is the plantar flexion of the ankle innervation is same that is it is supplied by the tibial nerve so here we can see the soleus muscle and the plantaris muscle soleus muscle is so named because of its shape then we have the muscles in the deeper compartments we have popliteus flexor digitorum longus flexor hallucis longus and tibialis posterior so this is the popliteus muscle it is arising from the lateral surface of the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral meniscus it is inserted on the posterior aspect of proximal shaft of tibia above the soleal line and it is supplied again by the tibial nerve action is flexion and lateral rotation of femur on tibia it is the unlocking muscle of the knee joint so it is laterally rotating the femur on the tibia then we have flexor digitorum longus it is arising from the posterior aspect of shaft of tibia and for insertion it is dividing into the four tendons for the lateral four toes and the innervation is same that is by the tibial nerve the action is plantar flexion inversion and flexion of the toes next we have the flexor hallucis longus it is arising from the shaft of fibula and it is inserting at the base of distal phalanx of the great toe the nerve supply is same that is by the tibial nerve the action is plantar flexion inversion and the flexion of the great toe then we have the tibialis posterior it is arising from the shaft of tibia and fibula and the interosseous membrane between them and the insertion is the main major portion of this muscle is inserted on the tibial uh, sorry navicular tuberosity and also it is providing slips to the calcaneus all the three uniforms cuboid and the basis of second third and fourth metatarsals the nerve supply is same that is by the tibial nerve action is plantar flexion and inversion of the foot then we have the flexor retinaculum so this flexor retinaculum is situated on the medial aspect of the ankle below and behind the medial malleolus and the function of this retinaculum is that it is keeping these tendons which are passing from back of leg to the sole in their positions the attachment of this retinaculum is anteriorly or superiorly it is attached to the posterior border and the tip of the medial malleolus so here we can see the superior attachment and below it is attached on the medial process of calcaneum tuberosity the structures which are passing deep to the flexor retinaculum from medial to lateral side these are the tendon of tibialis posterior then the tendon of flexor digitorum longus then the posterior tibial artery and its branches then posterior tibial nerve and its terminal branches and the last one is tendon of flexor hallucis longus the mnemonic for this structure is tom dick and harry tom means tibialis posterior dick is flexor digitorum longus n for artery in the nerve harry is for the hallucis longus now the applied related to this 
is the tarsal tunnel syndrome in which there is compression of the tibial nerve which is passing deep to the flexor retinaculum and it causes the burning, the tingling and the pain sensations in the sole of the foot. Then we have the another content of the back of leg is the posterior tibial artery which is the branch of the popliteal artery and it is supplying the posterior and the lateral compartment of the leg and the sole of the foot. It begins at the lower border of the popliteus. So here we can see it is arising from the lower border of the popliteus. At the lower border of the popliteus, the popliteal artery is dividing into two terminal branches that is the posterior tibial artery which is running on the posterior aspect of the introscious membrane and the anterior tibial artery which is running on the anterior aspect of the introscious membrane. So this artery runs on the posterior aspect of the introscious membrane. It runs downwards and medially to reach the posterior medial aspect of the ankle. So here we can see it is running downwards and medially and reaches the posterior medial aspect of the ankle. And below the flexor retinaculum it is dividing into its terminal branches that is lateral branchal and the medial branchal arteries. Throughout its course, it is accompanied by the tibial nerve. Then the branches of this artery, these are the peroneal artery, which is the largest branch. Then muscular branches to all the muscles of the back of leg. Nutrient artery to the tibia, which is the largest nutrient artery in the body. Then circumflex fibular artery, which encircles the lateral side of the neck of fibula. Then the communicating branch, which communicates with the similar branch of the peroneal artery. Then the medial malleolar branch which passes towards the medial malleolus. Calcanean branch which supplies the soft tissues of the heel and the terminal branches are medial plantar and the lateral plantar arteries. So here we can see the terminal branches. This is the lateral plantar and this is the medial plantar artery of the posterior tibial artery. Then we can feel the posterior tibial pulse 2 cm below and behind the medial malleolus. So this is the area where we can feel the pulsations of the posterior tibial artery. Then the another content of the back of leg is tibial nerve. As we know the muscles of back of leg they are supplied by the tibial nerve. This nerve is the larger terminal branch of the sciatic nerve. It arises on the back of thigh at the junction of upper two third and lower one third and enters the popliteal fossa. Then it enters the posterior compartment of the leg by passing deep to the tendinous arch of the soleus along with posterior tibial vessels. Then it is running downwards and medially accompanying the posterior tibial artery and below it is passing beneath the flexor retinaculum and enters into the sole to supply the muscles over there. The branches of tibial nerve these are the muscular branches to the muscles of back of leg. Cutaneous branches, these are the medial calcanean branch which supplies the skin of back of leg. Also the lower surface of the heel, that is the weight bearing area of the heel. It provides articular branches to the ankle joint. Then we come to the clinical anatomy. In this we have the Achilles tendon rupture. As the name indicates, in this uh, anatomy we can see the rupture of the Achilles tendon that is tendo Achilles in because of over stretching during sports like racket. Then we have posterior tibial tendon syndrome. This is occurring in women especially of sixth decade. The risk factors for this is the obesity, diabetes, increase in age and hypertension. So the symptoms are it includes the tenosynovitis the medial ankle or foot pain and weakness and there is progressive loss of arch that is the medial arch of the foot. Then we can use plantaris muscle tendon as a graft as it is vestigial so we can easily use this tendon for grafting purposes. Then there is a detailed note on the tarsal tunnel syndrome. For this we should mention about what is a tarsal tunnel. Tarsal tunnel is a space which is created between the medial malleolus of the tibia and the medial tubercle of the calcaneum on the medial aspect of the ankle. This tunnel provides passageway for various important structures which are passing 
from the lower leg to the foot that is the tendons nerves and vessels the boundaries for this tunnel is the superiorly it is bounded by the medial malleolus that is the part of tibia inferiorly it is bounded by the medial tubercle of the calcaneus then the floor is formed by the medial surfaces of the tibia the talus and the calcaneus and the roof is provided by this flexor retinaculum and the content of this tunnel are the structures which are passing from back of leg to the sole of foot that is uh, termed by the mnemonic that is tom dick and harry these are the tibialis posterior tendon flexor digitorum longus tendon posterior tibial artery and vein and the tibial nerve and the last one is the flexor halsus longus now the applied related to this tunnel is tarsal tunnel syndrome in which there is irritation because of either mechanical or chemical to the tibial nerve when it crossing the tarsal tunnel and it causes the burning pain at the sole of foot which is aggravated by the standing walking and other activity it causes numbing or tingling at the base of the foot the most common cause for the syndrome includes the flat feet the ankle sprain or diabetes mellitus or varicose vein ganglion axis swollen tendons or the bony spurs so this is all about the tarsal tunnel syndrome so this is all about the back of leg anatomy i hope you understand well thanks for watching